So in the last video I built a Ford converter and I experimented with it a little bit and in this video I want to control the output because the way it worked in the last video was just that I could change the duty cycle and uh, by drawing more or less current the voltage would vary. So in this video I want to use the TL494 as a basic controller to control voltage. This IC is a very generic and very simple PWM controller. So let's quickly look at how it works so that then we can build a circuit and test it. Okay, so here's the functional block diagram. Aside from the supply pins, we can look on the left, we have all the input pins. The output control pin decides whether we use it in a push-pull configuration or if both transistors work in the same way and can be put in parallel. And on the top for pin 6 and 5, we can choose the frequency by connecting a capacitor and a resistor here. Next on pin 4, we have the dead time control. This limits the dead time based on the analog voltage applied to it. And then we have two error amplifiers, and these can be used to control voltage and current if we want. In my case, I'm just going to use one for the voltage control. Then we have the feedback pin that's used for the control, that's just the output of the air amplifiers. And then in the middle, we see that it basically generates a PWM and it outputs it on the right. Quick note on the outputs. Basically, we just have a transistor and we have access to both the collector and emitter. We can choose to use it as a common emitter or an emitter follower. Remember that in the common emitter configuration, it's going to invert our digital signal on the output. I'm going to use it in the push-pull configuration just because this limits the duty cycle to 45% instead of going up to 95. For my circuit, I'm going to use a MOSFET driver because using a pull-up or pull-down resistor is just not enough to make the MOSFET switch quickly. I'm going to use the MOSFET driver UCC27714 that I made a video about not too long ago. So if you want to see how that works, you can check it out there. For this video circuit diagram, I'm just going to draw it as a simple buffer. Okay, so let's take a look at the schematic. At the top, we can see that we just have the Ford converter, as I explained it in the previous video. And more importantly, we have our controller IC at the bottom with a regulator. We can see on pins five and six, we have a capacitor and resistor to create the switching frequency. Then on the inverting input of one of the two error amplifiers, we have our reference voltage, and then we have a capacitor from the feedback pin to stabilize the whole system. On the not inverting input we have our output voltage on the top we can see that it creates a reference voltage of 5 volts we use this to create a stable reference for error amplifier then we use a 1 kilo ohm resistor to create the emitter follower configuration to create the output waveform for the gate driver Here's a circuit built on a breadboard and after giving it power I can slowly ramp up the voltage on the reference pin and we can see that we have a voltage on the output. We also see that there's current flowing and in fact I put these two analog meters to monitor voltage and current on the output. If I try to connect and disconnect the 10 ohm load that I have in parallel with the light bulb we can see that the voltage is absolutely steady but the current varies a lot. This is because most of it was going through this 10 ohm load. To test this a little bit better I'm going to use another resistor of 4.7 ohms so it's going to draw more current than the 10 ohm one and I'm going to connect it in parallel with all the loads. We can see that once I connect it the current goes up again but the voltage doesn't change. Now if I connect and disconnect you can see the voltage change but let's look at what happens to the duty cycle. So on the second channel on the bottom we have the gate voltage and we can see that it's changing when I connect and disconnect the additional load. The first channel on the top shows the output voltage and we can see that there's something going on at the output when I connect and disconnect the resistor. Now looking at the input current we can also see that connecting and disconnecting this additional load changes the input power. Now to look better at what happens during this transient, we can look at the response. Here I'm going to connect the load and see what happens. If we zoom in, we can see that the duty cycle is changing, although it's not a bunch, but it's still noticeable. So altogether, I'm pretty happy with how this thing is working. Obviously it has a little bit of ringing, but I don't care because I really don't like control. So I'm not going to try to improve it anymore. The last test that I want to do is the efficiency. This is always a very important topic in building converters. So I used my electronic load that I built a long while ago and I made a video about it, if you want to see it to draw variable amounts of current from the output. So I'm not going to go through the whole process, but all I did was write down the input voltage and the input current, output voltage, output current, calculated the power and then divided the output power by the input power and we have our efficiency. And if I graph this, we can see that the result is pretty awful. It doesn't get the 70%. 
And now that I'm recording this, it just occurred to me that I'm also including the power that goes to the fan of the electronic load. So it's not really a fair measurement. But aside from that, it's still not great. And we can also see that at lower powers, the efficiency drops. This is because there are some fixed losses, like the power drawn by the controller circuit, by the gate driver, and so on. So if we wanted to improve this, we could definitely try to put bigger conductors, try to switch the gate faster, and all those things. But unless I build a real PCB and try to make this thing serious, Seriously, I don't think I can get this to work much better. So if we can actually improve the system, let's just change the way we measure it, and then we can justify this with a scientific looking formula that makes it sound real. So what I'm going to do is measure the efficiency of just the power circuit without the control circuit. So I'm going to power the control circuit with a different power supply, so we can just measure what the losses are for our power circuit. All I did at this point was remeasure all the values and graph them out, and we can see that the result is a lot better. We peak at 90% efficiency, which is a great result. Now in all seriousness, it's not like I want to try cheating here. The point of this is to show that if we did make a bigger converter and the control circuit shouldn't change, the efficiency will definitely improve. Okay, so that being said, I think it's enough for today. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.